Hello, everyone. We are going to discuss about the listening authenticity in VR documentary made in 3D. Before we start the introduction of the research, we would like to make brief description of the two different kinds of the branch in VR cinema. The first one is the VR film movies filmed in 360 degree, like this one, Traveling Will Black, directed by the Roger Ross Williams. Those weird films filmed in 2D with a panoramic camera or lens, for example the Insta360 or the Canadour fisheye lens. The footage can wrap around users like a sphere. Although the sphere provides a panoramic viewing experience, the viewer will not be able to see dips in space or interact with the environment. And the second one is VR movies made in 3D like this one, it flowed. For celebration of Stephen King's famous film, these VR movies bring viewers back to the Pennywise home. Those VR films made in 3D means that the virtual space is set up through the modeling in computing software, like Maya or 3D Max, and then to 3D engine drivers, like Unity or Unreal. The viewer could perceive the true depths in the virtual environment. Although the visual space they capture are entirely constructed by the computer, like this cute rabbit in VR film, Invasion. You can see the spatial depths of the field and create a sense of distance with the whole virtual environment. For those VR films made in 3D, a tricky question arises. Do documentaries exist in VR films made in 3D? Or in other words, can we really call a film is a VR documentary? When the space and mise-en-scene of the documentary are all artificially created through the computing software, whether it can still be considered an authentic form of documentary? How can this subgenre of documentary continue to exist as a kind of proclaimed non-fiction when the film is based entirely on fictional visual input. The current discussion on this realistic quality of the VR documentaries focus on the questioning on the visuality of the visual environment, and neglects that the listening is also part of the experience in this VE. So, is it possible to understand the authenticity of the VR documentary from the perspective of the auditory system? Our research would like to provide a perspective for understanding the auditory authenticity of non-fictional restoration of visual environment in visual reality documentaries. Such a perspective argues that although the VR documentaries are made with 3D modeling and computing engine, their authenticity in sound remains in line with the documentary principle. Beside that, the sound design creates a non-fictional soundscape to reproduce the general solution based on the real individual perception in existing history. The first part we would like to discuss about is the auditory authenticity. So, what is documentary? We always link documentary to the representation of reality. But how real is the reality in documentary film? The concept of documentary is a notoriously slippery eel, or even the slipperiest one in the history of cinema. Joan Garrison described this eel as, documentary is a clumsy description, but let it stand. As a genre of film, the distinction between documentary and its counterpart is not very clear. Such highly inclusive definition of reality of documentary blur the intellectual science of reality and cinematic or represented interpretation of the reality. Thus, fiction and non-fiction in cinema are not the only criteria that can distinguish documentaries from other genres. Bill Nichols brings up three assumptions to search for common ground of documentary and makes it stand out. Reality. It is a real event that happened in history. Real people. The person who experienced this event exists in real life. Real world. 
this event happening in the physical world. The documentary is a cinematic item that most actively promotes the illusion of immediacy, as it refuses to be in realism of a fictional world, but in favor of an attentive, ego-exist, real, authentic world. Such authentic spirit is even more related to the auditory than the visual presentation. To Peter Stolodek, the ear is the organ that connects the intimate and the public. Whatever met present itself as a social life, it initially comes about only as of the specific words of an acoustic bill over the group, a bill whose sonorous presence is capable of textualization. So the soundtrack of documentary could be regarded as an authentic standard in pulling back the imaginary fictionality that the image encouraged to the grounding of the reality. Thus, even though the documentary's acoustic sound, including the voiceover, ambient sound, or realism sound effect, do not always have an originating source on screen, they are all building an existential reality of being can trace back from the lived world and living experience. In projecting of reality, even though the visually captured virtual environment is composed of 3D models in VR documentary. Sound provides a non-fictional reconstruction of the spatial perception of the real world. The presence of sound is a wave motion in spatial dimension, which is also a sensation generated by the perception within the auditory system of humans. Although the interaction between the sound emitters and the perception in hearing is complicated, all listeners would build up the abstract space in their mind through the perception of the distance between the acoustic source and the space. For VR documentaries made in 3D, the objective reality of the sound field comes first from the technical reproduction of the oral reality of space. The sound space of authenticity in VR documentaries can be constructed based on the acoustic technology of the hardware display according to the three-dimensional coordinate spatial model proposed by Jens Borwitt, which divides the space into three intersecting planes, namely the horizontal plane, the front plane, and the median plane, based on the head of the reference system. In this model, the sound can be positioned anywhere in 3D space by adjusting the X, Y, and Z parameters which can also be broken down into the azimuth, elevation, and distance. The adjustment of sound distance can be achieved by changing several parameters, such as decibel, frequency, diffraction, refraction, and so on. Based on this high-related coordinate system, the VR documentary with 3D VE could use HRTF, high-related transfer function, to reproduce the difference between the sound in the physical environment and the sound constructed by the user's auditory system. HRTF is a model of sound resource localization that combines binaural time difference, a binaural sound level difference, and spectral structure characteristic, which are related not only to the physical sound, but also to the shape of the listener's head, shoulders, and ears. To build a virtual space in VR documentary, it has a convolution re reverb of the original sound in a physical space. It then compares the HRIR had related impulse response with the original impulse. This decay in sound frequency is then used as the spatial data to obtain a two-channel virtual surrounding sound signal accompanied by the specific head movement data to reproduce realistic auditory changes. This allows further restoration of the physical auditory reality in the virtual environment by listening through the headphones. This is a step close to the true spatial listening experience of the human ear than the Dolby or 5.1 surrounding sound in traditional film watching experience, which only has one horizontal plane of the sound. Thus, even though the virtual environment of VR documentary are built from the virtual model and the engines, 
spatial hearing in listening with HRTF provide the base for real-world artery reproduction and the essential oral distinction between the VR documentary and its counterpart in other VR film genres comes in the true genre's low-key spirit of the space embodied by its sound design of soundscape with a sense of being alive in a space. So in the second part, we will discuss about the virtual place in VR documentary, the soundscape with generous low key. When we discuss the sound of cinema in traditional seeing audiovisual cinematic space, it could be classified in on-screen, off-screen and non-dejectic sound. As audience perception of sound is influenced by the visual space within the frame and generate a specific illusion. When it comes to being an audiovisual cinematic space, the division of the sound becomes blurred. They are working as a soundscape that exists in a virtual place. The concept of soundscape was first introduced by Southworth in the 1960s and popularized by the Canadian composer Shakespeare as a positive sound marks. The soundscape could describe an acoustic environment as perceived or experienced by an individual. In the soundscape approach, the essentiality is managing the user's attention through the spatial energy focus descriptions, like disables frequency or sound location, to establish a sound weighted by the listener's perception. Such subjective perception of the soundscape is related to the generous low key of the particular space. Generous low key refers to the generous of place, meaning the preceding deity or separate. Every space has its unique qualities in terms of its physical makeup and how it's perceived by people. For a place in a virtual environment, the authenticity of a VR documentary comes from restoring the soundscape of the oral experience. This recreating the generous low key in which it historically exists as a physical space. VR documentary made in 3D emphasize the pyramid level of hearing in the viewing experience while making the design of specific fictional sound effect to affect the user's psychological being in the space. This ideology of sound design as the establishment of a realistic soundscape that shapes the user's understanding of the spirit of sound. According to the surfing and surfing, the soundscape in a virtual environment could be divided into two categories. The first one is the sound event. Its visualization in a virtual environment, users could interact as an acoustic object and ambient sound. There are no oral objects exist in the visual virtual environment. We will use the VR documentary, Any Frank House VR, as a case study to explain how those two types of the soundscape design build up a true spirit of space in the history. Firstly, the spatial temporal perception of this soundscape is closely linked to the reverberation and the reflection. As sound travels through space, the reflect of the surface of object and produce a series of the echoes. In a confined space, such as this secret annex, all sounds should have clear direct sound first, helping the user locate the direction and the distinction of the sound resource. Then the reverberation created by multiple echoes provide the sense of the secluded space. In physical space, the source of the reflected sound are complex, with spatial structure, material composition, and interface shape, all affecting the reverberation and the reflection. Therefore, for a VR documentary project, it is not only the material and texture of the model that needs to be considered, but also its corresponding sound material of the texture. Wood, cloth, metal, 
will generate different clothing sound as part of the soundscape. For example, the following case is from the VR project, The Press of Freedom. We will hear the sound without the sound texture of the echoes firstly. And then, this is the sound with the texture and HRTF reverberation. The sound generated by the interaction with the object in the VR documentary is therefore a process of soundscape triggering. This reflection forms a spatial contraction under the aural reality of the presence. In the Annie Frank's house we are viewing experience, for example, the user is required to interact with the bookshelf to open the entrance staircase to the hidden chamber. This is the real picture of the space where this bookshelf is formed. And the VR documentary is recreating this spatial hearing presence with two sound systems in the process provide a shifting scape of the house. The first system is the timely response to the sound of the wood juggling when interacting. The second system is the audio reverberation of the different segment of the two echoes produced in the inner and outer space when the sound is triggered. This section is the part where the documentary narrative shifts from the outer space of the house to the hidden inner space, a, a critical point where the viewer perceives the place as a secret annex. The 3D reverberation effect based on the real 3D data in the physical world of the house and created for the user's specific listening position and angles, provide a change in the spatial sense of the sound from one location to another within the space, even from one space to another. The subjective soundscape perception created by this auditory spatial perception is closer to the real listening experience in the house in history, but presenting a re relatively objective and realistic presence. In addition to the sense of place created by reverberation and reflection in the sound event, the spirit of the soundscape is closely linked to the design of the ambient sound. The soundscape of any Frank House VR consists of sound with the origin from any diary. For example, you can hear the sound of a wooden floor bending or the wind blowing through a window frame. Beside those localizable sound, the ambient spatial soundscape outside the house also created the panicked soundscape experience in the claustrophobic sanctuary, including the bomber aircraft circling, people screaming, and the trumps marching. This ambient sound will automatically alter the parameters to fit with where the user stand in the room. In the sound design, this VR documentary project does not just portray a solemn place setting, but instead follows their content and reflect to a uniquely individual experience from a teenager girl. When the sun is about to set and Annie could open the windows for a while, users could hear the sound of the leaves blowing in the wind and the chippling of the birds. This authentic restoration of the oral experience distinguished this house as a sacred annex and it used to head in, giving rise to the human spirit of the Jewish people during their time of the suffering. This reproduction of the generous loki in the individual state of the mind 
cannot be ac not, uh, accomplished through visualization of the virtual environment, but rather through the invisible stimulation of emotion from the soundscape. VR documentary made by Modeling and Computing Engine is still a very controversial subgenre, which has been considered inconsistent with the documentary authenticity in its virtual visual input. However, as William Roth suggests, the true aim of the documentary was not to replicate the human sense, but once again to utilize the technology of the cinema in order to tell a truth which the human sense alone could not attain. Sound exists in a physical world, acts on the sensational experience of the body, thus shaping the way of the hearing. The spatial nature of the sound allows auditory and the individual to have a more subjective experience of the place as it exists in the history. From an oral perspective, the sound design of the VR documentary made in 3D is a recreation of the real oral experience, a subjective and conscious reproduction of the auditory modality of the authenticity. Thank you all for your listening. This is all about our research.